It is one of America's oldest unsolved mysteries, and it happened in our own backyard. What happened to the lost colony of Rome? It's already horrific when you think about missing people, but imagine how terrifying it will be when it involves a whole colony. The mysterious disappearance of the Roanoke colony is real and not one to write fable stories about. The colonists' fate has become one of American history's most enduring mysteries, but recently, an expert is said to have the keys to unlocking the mysteries surrounding this sudden disappearance. So what is it he discovered? Let's find out. In 1587, a small colony was founded on an island off the eastern coast of North America. The settlement would have been the first permanent English colony in the New World had the settlers not disappeared under unknown circumstances when a ship visited the colony five years later in 1590. It started when a group of settlers arrived on an island off the coasts of North America. They began their livelihood there, building homes, plowing fields, and creating a small community. However, within three years, they disappeared into thin air, and their whereabouts and the reason for their sudden disappearance became a horror story to narrate. So, what's the story of the Roanoke Colony? Roanoke Colony was founded by Governor Ralph Lane in 1585 on Roanoke Island in what is now known as Dare County, North Carolina, United States. Lane's colony was troubled by a lack of supplies and poor relations with some local Native American tribes. While awaiting a delayed resupply mission by Sir Richard Grenville, Lane abandoned the colony and returned to England with Sir Francis Drake in 1586. Grenville arrived two weeks later and returned home, leaving behind a small detachment to protect Raleigh's claim. Following the failure of the 1585 settlement, a second expedition led by John White landed on the same island in 1587 and set up another settlement. Sir Walter Raleigh had sent him to establish the city of Raleigh in Chesapeake Bay. That attempt became known as the Lost Colony due to the subsequent unexplained disappearance of its population. The colony has since been known as the Lost Colony, and the fate of the 112 to 121 colonists remains unknown. The Roanoke Colony was important to the history of America because Queen Elizabeth intended it to be the first permanent English settlement in North America. Its establishment would help England counter the dominance of Spain in the 16th century. The report states that flagship pilot Simon Fernandez forced White and his colonists to remain on Roanoke during a stop to check on Grenville's men. White returned to England with Fernandez, intending to return more supplies for his colony in 1588. The Anglo-Spanish War delayed White's return to Roanoke until 1590, and upon his arrival, he found the settlement fortified but abandoned. The cryptic word Croatoan was carved into the barrier, which White interpreted meant the colonists had relocated to Croatoan Island. Before White could follow this lead, rough seas and a lost anchor forced the mission to return to England. As sad as it may be, the fate of the approximately 112, 121 colonists remains unknown. Speculation that they had assimilated with nearby Native American communities appears in writings as early as 1605. Investigations by the Jamestown colonists produced reports that the Roanoke settlers had been massacred, and stories of people with European features were seen in Native American villages, but no conclusive evidence was found. So where could they be? There have, however, been speculations on how hurricanes affected early settlers and how this could be the fate of the Roanoke colony, probably leading to their mysterious disappearance. But could this be true? Could hurricanes be the possible cause of their disappearance? Hurricanes routinely leveled plantations and towns, destroyed crops and infrastructure, and claimed hundreds of lives. They are annual, seasonal threats in the Caribbean and South Atlantic. Most storms develop in the eastern Atlantic Ocean off the African coast, although some arise within the Caribbean basin. They form during the summer and early autumn when the ocean water temperature is highest and are carried eastward by the trade winds. The wind speed of hurricanes ranges from 74 miles per hour, the minimum speed separating hurricanes from tropical storms, to more than 155 miles per hour, the basis for today's definition of a Category 5 storm on the Saffir Simpson scale. In addition to pounding winds and driving rains, the most dangerous element of hurricanes is often the storm surge, floodwaters that can exceed 20 feet in height. Hurricanes sometimes move up the eastern seaboard of the United States and strike the mid-Atlantic and New England states. 
However, they are most common and destructive among the islands of the Caribbean Basin and the low-lying coastal areas of the South Atlantic coast of North America and along the Gulf of Mexico. Since Europeans began settling in North America, hurricanes have altered the course of history. Historians say South Carolinians would speak French instead of English today if it were not for hurricanes. Or maybe Spain would have ruled Charleston for a time. The first Europeans to encounter Atlantic Ocean hurricanes were Spanish explorers. The word hurricane comes from the Spanish hurrican, borrowed from the name of an evil spirit feared by the Taino, an extinct Caribbean people. Other Indian tribes also used similar names for various devils, storm gods, and giant cyclones. Consequently, one of the first attempts at English colonization in the Americas, Roanoke Island, proved to be a unique challenge as storm after storm battered the region. Most of the systems that struck this island would likely have impacted the region now known as Virginia. According to reports on June 23, 26, 1586, Sir Francis Drake arrived near Roanoke Island, only to be greeted by a storm. It was described as extraordinary and lasted three days. His fleet was in great danger during the storm. The Primrose broke its 250-pound anchor. Hail the size of hen eggs pelted the colony. Water spouts also threatened the mariners. The settlers evacuated back to England soon after the storm. More so, on August 31, 1587, Admiral Drake encountered a hurricane at Roanoke Island the following year. Strong northeast gales caused him and his crew to cut his cables and set out to sea. It took six days to regroup after this treacherous storm. Also on August 26, 1591, Roanoke Island was again struck by a severe storm. The winds blew out of the northeast directly into the harbor. Waves crashed on a sandbar, and currents in the area became quite dangerous. So what does all of these bring to your mind? One theory explaining the disappearance of Roanoke Colony suggests a hurricane destroyed the village, though there is no evidence to prove the theory. It is considered unlikely due to the lack of damage to a fence around the village, on which the villagers left an inscription, which has made it impossible to ascertain if a hurricane is responsible for the mysterious disappearance. This has made archaeologists and experts dive deep into uncovering the mysteries of this disappearance. Some have compared other instances of vanished or dissolved colonies with that of Roanoke to see the similarities or differences to arrive at a solution. Let's explore some. San Miguel de Gualdape was a colony of many firsts in 1526. It was the first known European settlement in the continental United States, the first to bring enslaved Africans to the continent, and the location of the first slave revolt in North America. 1526. Lucas Vazquez de Ayllon landed in present-day South Carolina or Georgia with 500 colonists and 100 enslaved Africans. Their settlement lasted mere months. The ship holding most of the colonists' food stores sank, and they had arrived too late to plant crops. Then, an unknown illness struck down 350 of the 500 settlers and an unrecorded number of their captives. A group of enslaved persons took matters into their own hands, burning down an owner's house, killing him, and escaping into the forest. The remaining Spanish settlers abandoned the colony and sailed for home. Moving forward is Sable Island, 1,589 to 1,599, called the Graveyard of the Atlantic, for the number of shipwrecks on its shores. The Marquis de la Roche first settled Sable Island in 1589 or 1599. Faced with a lack of volunteers, La Roche approached men imprisoned for crimes and gave them a choice, execution or a second chance on Sable Island. Seventy former convicts joined him, though the colony located off the coast of Nova Scotia was soon beset by crimes and infighting. In 1602, La Roche stopped supplying it. He relented a year later though, by 1603, just 11 of the 70 settlers were still alive. Sable Island is still populated by wild horses descended from livestock imported by Europeans. Also, Ajakan, 1570. This colony was founded by nine Jesuit missionaries in 1570 on Chesapeake Bay. They had brought along a member of the Powhatan tribe, Paquiquineo, a man the Spanish had kidnapped from the area nine years prior as part of their mission to convert his people to Catholicism. With provisions dwindling, 
The missionaries followed their captive into the forest for food, giving him a chance to escape and exact his revenge. Paquiquineo regrouped with the Powhatan to destroy the Spanish mission and murder the settlers who had attempted to colonize their land. In addition, the British colony of West Florida, which once stretched from the mighty Mississippi to the shallow bends of the Apalachicola and portions of what are now the states of Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana, is the forgotten 14th colony of America's revolutionary era. The colony's eventful years as a part of the British Empire form an important and compelling interlude in Gulf Coast history that has for too long been overlooked. For many reasons, including that West Florida did not rebel against the British government, the colony has long been dismissed as a loyal but inconsequential fringe outpost, if considered. But the colony's history showcases a tumultuous political scene featuring a halting attempt at instituting representative government, a host of bold and colorful characters, a compelling saga of struggle and perseverance in the pursuit of financial stability, and a dramatic series of battles on land and water which brought about the end of its days under the Union Jack. But after all these historical findings and explorations, it has disappeared aside from Roanoke being listed among the 13 colonies in history. It's intriguing to know that experts are relentless in the search for the truth about the disappearance of the Roanoke colony. It is much more fascinating and thought-provoking to know that experts and scholars are said to have solved the great mystery of this colony and its mysterious disappearance. But what did they find? Or should it be a question of how they found it? So what truth has been discovered about the Roanoke colony? There are many theories about what became of Roanoke, none particularly pleasant. It's a mystery that has intrigued Americans for centuries. The settlers, who arrived in 1587, disappeared in 1590, leaving behind only two clues. The words Croatoan, carved into a fort's gatepost, and Crow, etched into a tree. However, researchers uncovered a new lead in 2012 while examining a map at the British Museum in London that White had painted of the Elizabethan-era United States, titled La Virginia Pars. Hidden in invisible ink, presumably to guard information about the colonies from the Spanish, were the outlines of two forts, one 50 miles west of Roanoke, the same distance away that the colonists had told White they planned to move, according to his writings. According to reports, the first Colony Foundation's team of archaeologists, led by Nick Lucchetti, set out to investigate the site in Bertie County, North Carolina, in 2015. Promisingly, the possible settlement was close to a Native American village called Metaquem, typical of early European settlements. There was no sign of a fort, but just outside the village wall, the archaeologists found two dozen shards of English pottery at what's been dubbed Site X, ground-penetrating radar revealed another possible dig site two miles away. The search continued in December 2019 at what's been dubbed Site Y, yielding many more fragments of ceramics from different parts of Europe. The fragments, which come from vessels used for food preparation and storage, suggest the presence of long-term residents. Although the experts haven't ruled out the possibility that the artifacts may have been left behind by colonists from Jamestown, founded in 1607, Lucchetti is confident that his find is evidence of a group of relocated Roanoke colonists. Notable is a lack of English pipes, which were ubiquitous among Jamestown settlers, suggesting the ceramics date from an earlier period. What's more, in 1590, the would-be governor of a colony meant to be one of England's first outposts in North America, discovered that more than 100 settlers weren't on the small island where he left them. More than 400 years later, what happened to those settlers who landed on Roanoke Island off the coast of modern North Carolina has become a piece of American mythology, inspiring plays, novels, documentaries, and a tourism industry in the Outer Banks. Different stories have taken root that the colonists, who left no clear trace aside from the word Croatoan, carved on a tree, survived somewhere on the mainland, died in conflict with Native Americans, or met some other end. However, a new book by author Scott Dawson titled The Lost Colony and Hatteras Island, published in June and citing 10 years of excavations at nearby Hatteras Island, aims to put the mystery to bed. 
The author, a researcher from Hatteras, argues that the native people who lived there took in the English settlers and that historical records and artifacts can end the debate. He and his team discovered a sword called Rapier, a nugget of copper and stoneware from Germany, all discovered in a soil layer from the late 1500s. He asserted that this object and some other artifacts discovered could simply have been bartered by the colonists rather than brought with them to Hatteras Island. Excavators have also discovered personal items like a piece of slate marked with the letter M. Mark Horton had speculated that this piece was owned by an educated elite who could read and write, but it wasn't useful for trade. Also, Dr. Maynard Lowry presented a similar possibility in her 2018 book on the history of the Lumbee people, the descendants of dozens of tribes in a wide region, including eastern North Carolina. She had said that despite violence by the English against Croatoan villagers, the settlers probably took refuge with them. So the Indians of Roanoke, Croatoan, Sakotan, and other villages had no reason to make enemies of the colonists. Instead, they probably made them kin. More interestingly, a report shows that the lost colonists were the third group of English arrivals on North Carolina's Roanoke Island, settling near the modern-day town of Manteo. The first group to arrive in 1584 came to explore and map the land for future groups. A second group arrived in 1585 and was charged with a military and scientific mission. But this second group's trip was far from peaceful. That's where tensions begin with the local Native American tribes. Clay Swindell of the Museum of the Albemarle in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, a member of the archaeology team investigating the colony, said. He also said that this second group was driven out in 1586 by local tribes angry that the colonists were taking up good land and resources. The third group arrived in 1587. Entire families came with 17 children, including women and 11 children, accompanied by a party of 90 men. That meant the group wanted to settle in the New World and was not a military excursion, which would have included only male explorers. However, a clue uncovered in a long-forgotten, centuries-old map of the area called La Virginia Pars, drawn by the colony's governor, John White, kicked off a re-examination of the fate of the lost colonists. An artist and employee of explorer Sir Walter Raleigh, White was later appointed governor of the New Lands. He was also the grandfather of Virginia Dare, the first English child born in the New World. Two patches on the map got Brent Lane of the First Colony Foundation in Durham, North Carolina, wondering if they might hide something beneath. Scientists at the British Museum looked into the patches and discovered a tiny red and blue symbol. They wonder if it could have indicated a fort or a secret emergency location. However, most researchers think the colonists likely encountered diseases or violence caused by New World microbes their bodies had never encountered before. They also believe that when the crisis, or whatever that may have been hit, the colonists split up into smaller groups and dispersed. There is, however, a prevailing theory that the colonists abandoned Roanoke and traveled 50 miles south to Hatteras Island, which was then known as Croatoan Island. But Klingelhofer, an expert, had suggested that what if they went in another direction? He also argued that archaeologists have identified the nearby site of a small Native American town named Metaquem, which may have adopted some colonists. While researchers don't know much about the Native American town and its inhabitants, the existence of this small Native American town has been verified, thereby giving room for possibility. This lost colony has left many wondering and seeking answers as to what led to her sudden disappearance. After 400 years, the fate of the lost colony remains a mystery. Archaeologists, historians, and scholars have not agreed on what happened to the colony. Many theories, from the scientific to the wildly speculative, have been posed, yet no particular body of evidence points to a coherent explanation. Speculations, thought-provoking theories, and analyses ranging from relocation to massacre to starvation and even colonization have left many blanks on the real story behind this mystery. But what do you think about the disappearance of the Roanoke colony? We would like to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Please don't hesitate to like, share, and subscribe for more interesting content.